What is just here? Hi people, we have no time to wish. We can't wait for my life to death. Whatever all you miss, I'll go find me back on YouTube. Whatever it is all you miss. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. I pray even now, O God, by your Spirit tonight, O God, that you lead by your Holy Spirit tonight, Father God. We come against every distraction. Yes, we come against every technical difficulties tonight. Yes, we come against every principalities and powers, O God, that rules, O God, into the technical part of life, O God, yes, yes, into the technology part of life tonight. We put a stop to your interruptions tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, and we decree and declare that tonight we shall run forth, O oh God, with no interruption, yes, with no God. freezing, with no glitch, with no yes, problems, O oh God. Yes, tonight in the name yes, of Jesus, we pray. Yes, God, I pray, O oh God, that at the end of it all you be glorified tonight. You be exalted tonight. You be high yes, and lifted up, O oh God. Yes, that somebody, O oh God, will know that you are God and beside you there is no other. That somebody will know, O oh God, that you are God and you love them in spite of. Father, that somebody will know oh god that you are god and they will come under repentance oh god yes father father we pray even for the backsliders tonight oh god. yes we pray oh god that you touch them in a special way tonight because yes, you yes. know oh god that you reign supreme tonight and you are the god that sees all and knows all oh god yes, and you are the god that is more than able to make the impossible possible oh yes, god yes. and tonight oh god whatsoever their hearts have been hardened oh god towards you oh god Jesus. towards you where the things concerning you, O oh God, Jesus, their heart has been hardened, O oh God. I ask that you soften it by your Jesus. spirit and mighty, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you enter the homes of everyone that would be viewing tonight, O yes, oh God. God. And you touch, O oh Father, and God, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, O oh God. You move, O oh God, by your spirit and cause transformation, O yes, oh God. Father. Cause conviction, O oh Father, and yes, God, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we just yes, glorify Lord. you tonight. Yes, we magnify you, O God. Jesus, we pray, O God, for a supernatural tonight, yes, O God. For Jesus. something, O Father in God, of the supernatural to manifest by your yes, spirit Father. tonight in the lives of your people, O God. Yes, Lord. For we know, O God, that time is at hand, O God. Yes, we know, O God, that the enemy is busy, O God, but we bid him a liar tonight, Jesus. O God. For we know, O God, that he come to kill, steal, and destroy, O God. But Father. we know, O God, your gift tonight is grace and mercy, mercy. and love and mercy. Peace tonight, O oh Father, yes, in God, Jesus. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes, yes. God, we give you praise tonight. Hallelujah, God, Father. we give you glory tonight. Yes, we magnify you yes, tonight, O oh God. Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your Son that died on that cross yes, for our sins, O oh yes, God. Father. We thank you, O oh God, for that grace and mercy that kept us through yes, this day, O oh God. For the very Father, bread that we breathe tonight, O oh God. Yes, for everything that you have done and that you are about to do, O oh God, yes, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we pray even now, O oh God, where our sins may be before us, O oh God. Yes, we pray, O oh God, that you have mercy upon our souls and forgive us, O oh God. Jesus. And, O oh God, make known the things to us that is unknown, O oh God, that yes, is affecting you, O oh God. Yes, Any Lord. sin, O oh God, that is unknown, O oh God, I ask tonight that you make it known, O oh God. Yes, Jesus. By your spirit tonight, Father, you speak tonight, God. Yes, Father. You talk to your people, O oh God, and you feed the souls, O oh God, what you want them to feel. Yes, be fed, O oh God, yes, tonight, Lord. Father. Yes, Lord. You just have your way in this place. Yes, Father. Holy Spirit of the living God, have your way in this place tonight. Have your way in the lives tonight, O oh Father yes, and God Jesus. We glorify you, O oh God. Hallelujah. We magnify you tonight, O oh God. Jesus. Father, even now, O oh God, we put, O oh God, even the land, O oh God, the wind, the fire, and the water under the authority of the Holy Spirit yes, tonight. Lord. As we command, O oh God, the atmosphere, O oh God, under the anointing of the Holy yes, Spirit tonight, O oh God. Hallelujah. God, we release your anointing into the atmosphere tonight. Glory to you, O oh God. Let everything, O oh God, that is sent after us, O oh God, we renounce it tonight, O oh God, and we rebuke, O oh God, everything of the enemy tonight, every demonic spirit and entity tonight, in the mighty name of Jesus. We declare warfare tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. 
yes, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you release, oh God, your warring angels tonight, oh yes, God, Lord, with yes, swords Lord. of fire, oh God, yes, to fight Lord. on our behalf yes, in the spiritual Lord. realm tonight, oh yes, God, Lord. where the enemy is planning and plotting, Jesus. oh God. We put every assignment, oh God, every contract, oh God, every orchestration, yes, every yes, plan, oh God, of yes, the enemy to not the tonight in the mighty name yes, of yes, Jesus. Yes, we cancel, oh God, every assignment that was assigned yes, over our lives, yes, that was yes, assigned, Father. oh God, over this life tonight, Jesus. that was assigned to cause technical difficulty, Jesus. that was assigned, oh God, to cause problems, oh God, we come against it in the in mighty name, name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Christ. Yes. And by the power of yes. your spirit tonight, oh God, yes, we mash up, oh God, we cause confusion yes. in the yes. camp of the enemy yes. right yes. now, oh God, we cause confusion in Satan's kingdom tonight, in the name oh God, of Jesus hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, we lift your name on high right now, yes, God, Lord we glorify God. you right yes, now, oh God, yes, we magnify Lord. you, oh God, for you are Alpha and you are Omega, oh God, you are the first and you are the last, oh God, you are the beginning and you are the end, oh God. For there is none like you in this world, O oh God. Yes, you are the God which no, was, which is, and which is to come tonight, O oh God. Great is your yes. faithfulness, O yes. oh God. Yes. Yes. You are victorious tonight, God. Yes. We magnify you, God. Yes. We glorify you tonight, Lord Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. As we make this prayer, Lord, and name yes. but in Jesus' name right now. Amen. 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 My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. All of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory belongs to you. Yes, Lord Jesus. You deserve it. Yes, you deserve it. You deserve it. Your faithfulness to my God. Yes, Lord Jesus. It's only you are holy. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Only you are worthy. Yes, Lord Jesus. Only you are wonderful. no one else like you who is faithful ever true yes Lord all my love my heart my life is a testimony is a 
até you mm-hmm. 
call upon His name and worship Him. Yes, Lord. We have come into this house to call upon His name and worship Him. Be glorified tonight, O God. Be exalted tonight, O God, Jesus. And call upon His name. Of the living God, we ask you, God, to manifest yourself in this place tonight. God. Worship Him, Hallelujah, Christ. Jesus. Great is your faithfulness, O God. We have, you are awesome tonight, we O God. Have come you are great tonight, O God. To you are mighty tonight, O God, Jesus. And worship you are victorious tonight, O God. Yes, Lord. We Hallelujah. have house to call upon his name and worship him. We have come into this house to call upon his name and worship him. Break every chain tonight, O God, Jesus. Loose, O God, the bands of wickedness tonight, O God. Loose every chain, O God, of captivity tonight, O God. Father, tonight, O God, take your people back, O God, from the grip of the enemy, O God. Hallelujah. For your people, O God, have lost their way, O God. They have found themselves, O God, dabbling in darkness, O God. But tonight, I pray for a supernatural move, O God. I move by your spirit tonight, O God. Move to our and churches, O God, in your Jesus. Mash up every satanic altar, O oh God. Higher is God. For I know, O oh God, there is no fellowship with light and darkness, O oh God. And your word declare, O oh God, that you are light and in you there is no darkness, O oh God. So let your light shine bright tonight, O oh God. Jesus said the center of it all. Great are you tonight, O oh God. From awesome are you tonight, to oh God, Jesus. It will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. 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 Jesus at the center of it all. Yes, God. Yes, God. Tonight, Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all. Hallelujah. And every knee will bow, Hallelujah, and Jesus. every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing, nothing in, this in this world will do. do. Yes, Lord. Jesus, you're the center. Jesus, you and as you, oh God, you say yes, your name be lifted up, oh God, you will draw all to me, the oh heavens. And tonight, Father, you draw Jesus all your people be the tonight, Jesus, be Bring them out of captivity, you. oh God. Yes, Bring them out from under the devices of you. you. The from tonight, my heart oh God, to the heavens, Hallelujah. Jesus, be the be center. The center it's oh all about you. Yes, yes it's God. all. Yes, God. It's all yes, about Lord. you tonight, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all yes, about Lord. you tonight, yes, God. Yes, Father, Jesus. we worship you tonight, yes, oh God. Lord. Father, we come before you in our humble adoration yes, tonight, Lord. oh God. Because your word says, Father, humble ourselves yes, in the eyes of the Lord and he will exalt us. So we come before you humble tonight, oh God. Even now, O oh God, as we bow ourselves before you as servants, O oh God, as instruments to be used by you and for you, O oh God. And no one else shall get the glory from us but you, O oh God. Your praise, O oh God, will forever be in our lips, O oh God, Jesus. We give you praise tonight, O oh God. We give you honor and we give you glory tonight, O oh God. You are worthy, O oh God.
I will and you deserve it, oh God, Jesus. You. Let your grace fall tonight, oh God. You are my God. Father, wash our garments, oh God, with your blood tonight, Jesus. Every stain of sin tonight, oh God. Let it be cleansed by your blood tonight, oh God. Make known the unknown, oh God, of our sins, that our garment may remain clean, oh God, and white as snow, Father. Every stumbling block in our way tonight, oh God. We remove Most it in the mighty name of Jesus tonight, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I Jesus. Will we exalt you tonight, you. O God. We glorify you tonight, O God. I will As you sit on your throne, you. Father, and you look it down on your people tonight, O God. I will Pass us not, O God, tonight, you. Jesus. I will exalt you. I but give air, O God, unto our God. words, O God. And incline, oh God, your heart unto our prayer and supplication tonight, oh God. Great is your faithfulness, oh God. We exalt you tonight, oh God. We magnify you, oh God. I will exalt you. You are my God. You are my God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. We glorify you, God. God. We magnify you tonight, O God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night to everybody on the line once more. I want to thank you all for allowing us in your place and in your space and giving us this opportunity to share the word of God with you. And bring wisdom and unfolding mystery of the Bible. Tonight, we might be few in numbers. It's just me and my wife tonight. For now. As we were accompanied in the background in worship. By others. We greet you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior. And our soon coming King. Tonight. Now, this is just a continue of the last live that we was in. For those who was there, who have been viewing, we just continuing. And for those who knew, who is now viewing, I will just run through it as quick as possible to catch up where we left off. And the last live, we had a lot of technical difficulties because the devil is busy. The devil is always busy. So the topic that we're looking at is submitting to the will of God. And we look at two things under the, the context of submitting to the will of God, which is submit and submissive. And the next part of the topic would be trusting God's process, mm. even when you can't see his plan. Exactly. I know to some of you all this may not make sense. But we all have to do it whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. You have to trust God even when you don't know what he planned for your life is. Because on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll get up and you'll tell yourself what you want to do and accomplish in life. Whether it be your long-term goals or your short-term goals. But I am here by to tell you, you cannot succeed or make those goals pass by yourself. You still have to trust God for it to happen for you. And tonight, we're talking about submitting to the will of God and being submissive to the Spirit. Now, the first question that was asked in the previous slide is, what does the word submit mean? To some of you all, the word submit would be <coughs> turning over, giving in. The actual word submit means to accept or yield to a superior force or authority. Mm -hmm. When you submit, it means you're yielding, which is giving in, mm -hmm. or you accept, which means you turn over mm -hmm. whatsoever it is that you had in your mind or telling yourself that it was, you turn over all of that to a higher force or authority. Mm -hmm. And in this case, you're submitting to the Holy Spirit and you're submitting yourself to God. As the Bible asks you to submit yourself. Then the next question was, what does submissive mean? 
Now, in the previous live I was saying, I was telling you all that you cannot be submissive unless you, uh, unless you have submit. You need to submit first and then you could be submissive. submissive because the word submissive means ready to conform to the authority or the will of others. Right. You cannot be submissive to the Holy Spirit if you have not submitted to the Holy Spirit. Right. Therefore, the Holy Spirit would be, even if the Holy Spirit calling, you wouldn't be able to submit yourself or answer or, or be ready or show up for mm. duty because you have not submitted yourself yet. Right. And the first scripture we look at was James 4, verse 7, verse 7 which tells you about submitting yourself, mm -hmm. about resisting the devil, mm -hmm. and he would flee. Resist the devil and he will flee. Submit yourself. So you need to submit yourself. First you need to repent. Yes. Resist the devil and then submit. When you have done those such, then you can be submissive. Right. Because I will tell you something. You cannot inherit or hear from the from God's mouth unless you have repented. Okay. Unless you have submitted. Yeah. That's where salvation comes and that's where the Holy Spirit comes to you and allow you now to build a relationship where you can be submissive to the Holy Spirit. Mm. So first you must repent, resist the devil, and submit. Mm -hmm. You repent first, you see. Well, you need to come to the understanding. Repentance means to turn away. Mm -hmm. Turn back to God. To turn back to God means to give up all that you used to do. Everything. Everything that was ungodly. Yeah. Everything that was unpleasing to God. Right. To repent means to turn mm -hmm. back to God. Somehow we tend to do we own thing. I strain here for a little bit, but we're still on the same topic. Somehow we tend to do whatever we want, and you know, in prayer, we we'll say, God, we're sorry. Right. And then we will tell yourself, you know what? I repent, I good, I save, I save. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hell could still be a portion. Because first of all, repentance is not apologizing, and that's what you do when you just say, God, is sorry. Right. True repentance is when you say, Lord, I'm sorry, and you do not go back and do it again. Yeah. That's where the scriptures come and say, unless you dash your foot against the stone. Unless it turn back. And then the Bible says in Matthew, I believe, that it says that you'll become like a dog returning to it vomit. Mm -hmm. I know some of you see that already. A dog does vomit and eat back up and vomit. Mm -hmm. A dog will vomit and eat and next dog vomit. Right. And in the, in life, that's how we just do because some of we like to buy other people trouble. You understand sure. what I'm saying? Eh? Some of we like to, you know, buy other people fight and battle that it doesn't belong to you. Right. And that's the same thing like eating back your own vomit mm. because you have dogs that just eat other dogs vomit and some of us as humans just enter other people battle mm. so true repentance is turning back to god right. changing your life they can't want god the bible say any man that is a friend to the world is enemy to god right. you can't love the things of the world and please god because i hereby to tell you if you don't know god cannot be glorified in sin you can't live in sin and tell yourself you're glorifying God, you're wasting time. Some of you might not like this preaching, but I hear by to, to, to preach salvation. And as long as you're viewing me, I'll tell you the truth. It's up to you to choose to not view again, but it's your choice. As long as you're looking at me, I am going to tell you the truth. You cannot do what you want, how you want, the way you want, and then expect God to just be okay with that. It don't work like that. God is holiness and he asks you to be holy as he is holy. You cannot step out of holiness. Do whatever you want and then step back into holiness and feel God is seeing that because you're stepping like small thing. God passed. Let me tell you something. There is not a shadow of darkness that passed before God like that he haven't seen. Eh? God sees all and he knows exactly. all. Don't fool yourself and tell yourself that it's just a small thing. That is a small sin. Them people sinning bigger than me. Them people sinning more than me. Sin is sin and they're all equal to death. Yeah. The wages of sin is death. death. Right. And I, I, I want to let you know a little information tonight if you don't know. Every time you sin, you age in the spiritual realm. 
Hello, somebody. So if you're looking young and nice out there, the age in your spiritual them so you, you, you'll find yourself seeing young people dying out fast and thing. You're already draining yourself spiritually. So you already reaching the, the expire point of your life. Now it's it's sin that you sin. You do to your garment. When I when a Christian or a believer come on the repentance, God washes your entire garment over and it becomes white. And every time you sin, your garment get a wrinkle, it get a dinge, it get a spot. And you walk around. Now listen to me, some, some self-righteous person, this is for you. You walk around telling yourself that you're up there because you're going to church every day. But yet still your garment, the unseen part, the spiritual part of your life that you're not seeing. You're looking filthy. And that is why when you appear before God, you will say, depart from me, I know you're not. Because when you look at what you look like, you'll, see, you'll actually see the, the dinge and the stain of your sin over your spiritual garment. Mm -hmm. That is why Psalm is David in, in Psalm, say, I believe it's Psalm 51. He say, oh God. He said, I cry out with repentance. He said, have mercy upon him. He said, he was born in sin and sh in, in his mother belly was he shaping iniquity. He said, I cry out to God. He said, no, therefore wash me in your blood that I may be whiter than the snow. Purge me with hyssop. Then he said, you know what? I feel it's more than just that, you know. Mm. I feel, I feel something about the spirit in me broken. So you say, you know what? Renew in me the right spirit. He asked God to purify him, clean man. Because the garment that he had on was dinged. It was spotted. It was wrinkled. Right. Because he sinned. He had sinned. And I will tell you something. There is no sin in heaven. If you want to go to heaven, you can't go to heaven as a sinner. That is why Jesus died. If it was made easy for sinners to go to heaven, we would have never need Jesus. But I hear by to tell you, you need Jesus. You need Jesus and I need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Whether we like it or not, it have no other way into heaven. The Bible declares clearly, that there is no other name given under the heavens whereby man can be saved. So you could try Buddha. You could try Krishna. You could try Mother Lakshmi. You could try Muhammad. You could try Allah. Hail Selassie. You could try all of them. I'm not discriminating religion, but I need to bring across the truth. You will not find yourself in heaven unless you find this man called Jesus. Unless you find your savior called Jesus. Unless you submit yourself to Jesus. And asking you to add Jesus to your life. Asking you to submit your life to him. Yeah. Because there's a difference between addition and submission. submission. Some will just add Jesus to your life. But they are the ones that, you know, only when things bad, they know Jesus. Only when things bad, they know a little church song. Mm -hmm. Only when things bad, pray for me. Only when things bad, they say, hey, you're going to church, pray for my brother. But then I go into church for yourself. Eh, let me tell you something. Only you could worship God for you. Eh? I can't worship God for you. I can't praise away in heaven for you. Hello, somebody. I cannot open a door for you to access heaven. I can't do that. It's only Jesus could do that. And if you don't praise him yourself, if you do not surrender your life to Christ, I hereby to tell you this. The Bible declares clearly and make no mistake. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And if any other man, if any man tried to enter it in any other way, he entered as a thief. And I will tell you something, there is not a single person who could try to who could try to bribe their way to heaven, who could try to talk their way to heaven. You must live that life. Living the life to heaven, to make it to heaven, is living a holy and acceptable life. Because here, all you need to understand is, 
this this water don't gospel that you hear nowadays this water don't preach that you hear nowadays just just, just come to repentance get baptized and you're saved you're good for, you're good to go let me tell you something there are christians who baptize and in hell right now there are pastors who preaching on your pulpit and they're in hell right now there are man and woman of, who call themselves man and woman of god and they're on their way to hell right now you know why because they're straight from the number one most important thing be holy as I am holy. The Bible declares in Matthew there is no fellowship with light and darkness. Right. You cannot hear what I'm saying tonight. Be careful of these preachers behind this pulpit. Right. Be very careful of these preachers behind. Because some of them preaching from an altar, the devil, and preaching grace that they're making sense. You're fooling yourself, my right. friend. They're using, the, they're using the Holy Bible to bring across the word of God. But the altar is filled with the devil's power. They're using the power of the devil. But they're trying to preach the gospel of God. You cannot try to corrupt the incorruptible. You cannot corrupt God. And they are the ones that are leading a lot of souls to help. I will tell you why, because it have people who is not that educated in the world. Mm. It have, as the Bible call them, babes. Yes. They yes. are baby yes. in the spiritual realm. They're now converted. They're now looking for a home. They're looking for somewhere that they could feed and eat spiritually. And when they end up in the churches of these people who is looking, as the Bible says, have the form of godliness. They have a form of godliness, but they're actually now with God. They confess with the mouth that they love Jesus and they love God and this, but the action praising the devil. When they find themselves behind these people, their souls are being sent to hell. And some of these people that call themselves man of God and thing, doing it deliberately for power, for satanic power. They know what they're doing is deceiving the people, but because the people are bringing the money for them, mm. hello somebody, I am talking plain tonight, because the people bring any money for them, and the devil gain them power for the soul, they will send your soul to hell without even feeling a pinch. That not even bothering them in no way. It ain't even hurting them to know them sending souls to hell, you know why? Because all they care about is what this world has to offer. Fame. Power and money. Yes. You see these churches that only want to preach prosperity, prosperity. Look at them carefully with them eyes. And you must pray and ask God for the spirit of divine. You ask God for divine spirit and discernment so right. you can see these things. So that you wouldn't get yourself caught up in the net, in the snare, in these webs and the satanic devices. Because the devil come to kill, steal, and, dis and destroy, and deceiving is his number one move. And I hereby to tell all your sin have entered the church of God. Sin had found its way in the church of God. And right now, sin is standing behind somebody's pulpit and preaching to you and me. Right. Sending we soul to hell for demonic power, for money, for riches. Come on, somebody. We need to wake up tonight. We need to submit to the Spirit of God tonight. We need to come under subjection yes. at the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hammer tonight, somebody. And please, I beseech you, brethren, brethren, tonight. Listen to what I'm saying carefully because tonight could be your last chance. You might find this person talking, 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 but this might be the last voice and opportunity that God used to save you. Right. You're never too young to die. You're never too young to die. From the time you're born, you're born to die. And you would die. But when you die is where you go that matters. Right. If the devil ever deceive you and tell you that hell have AC and you'll get a high position, let me tell you something. That is a lie from the pit of hell. There is no level in hell that is comfortable. There is no level in hell where you'll be at ease. Hear me tonight, somebody. 
Stop allowing this devil to be using these people to send your soul to hell. Mm -hmm. We need to repent. Hell, I'm telling you, you need to repent. You need to turn back to God. Because mankind has lost their way. You don't believe me? Let me bring it scripture to you. The Bible declares that as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. What happened in the beginning? Now, we will think that we beginning started with Adam and Eve. But let me tell you something. If you didn't know, we beginning start with, with Noah on the ark. That is when we started over. And guess what happened with Noah on the ark? Noah's preaching. But the Bible declared that people were so comfortable in their sins and in their ways that they didn't give heed, they didn't listen and guess yeah. what Same thing all of a know. sudden all of a sudden in the twinkling of an eye the rain started to fall right. and guess what, too late was the cry that's what happening right now people it mightn't be a flood and we may not be building an ark right now but in the twinkling of an eye the sky could open. In the twinkling of an eye, Jesus could make you weep, could make you a parent. Where would you be? Where would you be right this second? Right this moment? If the clouds were to burst and the trumpet were to sound, where would you be? Look at the world right now. Everybody already starts to get comfortable with this thing. They start to call this thing the new normal. <laughs> Look at that. Wake up, people. Spiritually wake up. This is the new normal, you know. This is the end. And I hereby to tell you, salvation is for you and for I. It's not for me alone. It's not for you alone. It's for anybody. John 3, 16. It's for anybody. Christ came and he died. He gave his life willingly. Just imagine he was humble unto death. You know when you're born. You, let's imagine this. Eh? As man know as we are. Mm. When we born we're doing all we could not to die. Knowing that we're born to die. Still going down. We're doing whatsoever we could not to die. Right. But Christ knew that he was going to die. Christ knew that the time was coming that he had to lay down his life. Right. He didn't, I, I'm not saying that this is not the orchestrated plan of God, but understand saying he had to die, but it didn't mean that he had to die in the way that he did. The important thing was Christ had to die. He could have died like every ordinary person, but guess what? He died the way that he did. He, you know, you know what struck me a few days ago when the Holy Spirit showed me this? When the devil tell himself he was winning by killing Christ. He didn't even know that he was fulfilling the plan of God. Look at that. Right. When the devil tells himself, our boy are killing the son of God here today, the devil did not even know that he was actually orchestrated yeah. and put in place to fulfill the plan of God. Yeah. Hell, I was saying tonight, somebody, things might be happening to you. It might be pressure on all sides. Yeah, yeah. You might feel like you're going through, and I'll tell you this. As a believer, you're born to go through. Yeah. You were saved to go through. The Bible tells you that. What is one of the, the, the fruits of the Spirit? Long suffering. Long suffering. But not now we want to suffer, right? Yeah. Suffering is supposed to be for the worldly people. Hello? Let me open your eyes once more. You are living in the world. How could the suffering be for the world when you are not part of the world? And when, when it was written, it was written for the people who live in for God, right. not for the world. So don't expect the worldly people to suffer. You will see them prospering. You will see them making it before you. But don't let that trouble your heart. Let not your heart be not troubled. Because even though, you see, this, this is the tool that the devil been using. I want, I want to pay attention to me tonight. I'm not straying from the topic, but thank yeah. you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. This is the tool that the devil is using. Hey, you're living in this world. You might as well get comfortable in it. Hello? Wake up, children of God. 
be in the world but not of the world as the bible said you're in the world but you don't need to be off of the world yeah. you don't need to follow the trends of the world you don't need to follow any footsteps of how the direction the world going in if the world's spinning this way as i believe you need to go this way because you know you and the world can't go the same way right. the bible tell you that they will not know what you speak of because they are not born of the spirit and the things of the spirit will, will refer to the people who, in, who walk after the spirit and things of the flesh to the people of the flesh but the devil deceived when people so bad right now, making you say, hey, you know what? You're in the world, get the best of the world. That's why be careful of these people who preach in prosperity on earth. Because you are not supposed to prosper on earth. You're supposed to inherit. That's why God says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yeah, but tonight, some preacher might disagree with me when I say you're not supposed to prosper on earth. But they themselves might done be led astray. You are not supposed to prosper on earth. Prospering on earth should not supposed to be your main focus. That is why the Bible tells you clearly, lay your treasures in heaven. Where thief, nor moth, nor rust. Where nothing could interfere with it. If you lay your treasures in heaven, the Bible says, wheresoever your treasure is, that is where your heart would be. Come on, somebody here, but tonight. If you're trying to prosper on earth, where would your heart be? You may not like me tonight, but I have to tell you the truth. Let me do fool yourself. You might tell yourself you're trying to prosper on earth and thing, but you focus on God. Hello, somebody. Don't, you cannot hit me now. Because if my Bible tells me that wheresoever your treasure is, that is where your heart would be, how you could tell me your treasure on earth and your heart in heaven? Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Do allow the devil to fool you. Do allow the devil to manipulate you to go into the direction that he wants you to go to. Lay your treasures in heaven. And if you're there for laying your treasures in heaven, then you'll obey the word of God. Right. Then the things of the world and the materialistic aspect of the world would not bother you. It's okay if you reach 30 and you do your house, you have it in heaven. Yo, I say it tonight. If that just went over your head, I'll say it again. If it's 25, if it's 30, if it's 40, if it's 50 something, and you have not built your own house on this earth, build it in heaven. Amen. If it is, you've been writing your resume from since you're 18, mm. and you're already 35, and you can't find the job now, start to, start to submit resume to heaven. Right. Don't waste your time. Because God could be telling you, if I give you that job, I will lose you. Right. If I give you that house, right. I might not be able to get you outside to come to church. Yes. If I give you the husband that you want, I might not find you again. Come on, somebody. Not every time you don't get blessed, you feel God don't want to bless you. Hear what I'm saying tonight. The things of the world belong to the world. Right. What did Jesus say? Render unto Caesar what is due to Caesar and to God, which is God's. I will say God is spirit. Amen. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. So you cannot take the physical thing out of the world yes. and say, Hey, God, look this. Right. Now, in the Old Testament, they say do sacrifices mm -hmm. and things. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, people don't be deceived. The sacrifices that they used to do, God never used to take up the meat and take up the this and whatsoever they put as their offering and sacrifice. Eh? Mm. It's the actual heart of giving. It's the actual fact that they're doing it. That used to go up to God. Right. Those are the things, not, not, not the, 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 the materialistic things. Whatsoever belong to the world cannot please God. That is why he said, do not be a friend to the world. Do not find yourself in places where the world is asking of plenty and giving. Because the things that, that the world offers is to only keep you in the world. And I'll tell you something. The world is going one direction. And everybody that follows the world is going that same direction. 
The Bible declares that narrow is the path and few find it. I can't even do up a statistics to tell you how much people go into hell. Because if I tell you it's one in every four, <laughs> I feel it might be one in every ten making it to heaven. Because everybody's so focused on that broad part mm. and they're seeing everybody going so, so let me go so too. Mm. I see that I, ca I, ca I cannot fulfill this entire thing again in this one life tonight again. Mm -hmm. So I'll just complete this the first part which is submitting mm -hmm. to the will of God. And I'll tell you this. With the first scriptures we look at was James 4 7. Now let me look at Romans 8 7. Romans 8 7. Which talks about submitting, submission. And I'll tell you something even Christ Jesus was submitted, was submissive, and he did submit. And we'll come to that just now in the scriptures. Because the carnal mind is enemy against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Mm. Here I say, I just explained to all you about the spiritual and the physical, how it's different, how the physical cannot please God. Living in sin cannot glorify God. God cannot be glorified in sin because he is light and in him there is no darkness. Yes. Therefore, no spot, no wrinkle, no, no shadow of darkness could come before God and glorify him. Here we are saying, that's why he say looking for a church. Now when the Bible declares that he's looking for a church, they tell themselves that it is the building. We church is the best church. But the church is actually you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Bible says he's looking for a church without spot and wrinkle. They didn't mean... Now let me just use wisdom alone and, and bare common sense. If a church is built out of bricks and cement, mm. how are you finding wrinkle on that? You might find spots, a little dirtiness, but how are you finding wrinkle on that? Now let me use wisdom. As David used wisdom in the psalm. And he said, purge him with hyssop, hyssop. And wash him in the blood that mm -hmm. he may be white as snow. He was pertaining to his garment. To the gown. In the spiritual realm, you are supposed to be wearing a white, lily white garment. That does have spot and wrinkle. Clothes does get wrinkled up. Not buildings. That is why this, this scripture says he's looking for a church without spot and wrinkle. But the devil now come and trying to twist the word of God to get to believe that the, the church that the Bible is talking about without spot and wrinkle is a church. Church is a building. Mm -hmm. The church is you. And the spot and wrinkle that God don't want to find is on your garment, on your clothes. It's supposed to be white as snow. So Romans 8, 7 say, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. What is the carnal mind? The carnal mind is the thinking and the fleshly desires. Right. The carnal mind is when, you, when you're thinking fleshly or sinful thoughts. You are being carnal minded, not spiritually minded, not spiritually sober minded as the Bible declares. Be sober minded, not carnal minded. The carnal mind is enmity against God. You know what that means? That means you cannot be a friend to the world. Because you might think about how to make it in this world. You might be telling yourself, you know what, I need to do this. If I could only do this, I'll be a better man. If I could only accomplish this, I'll have a better life. If I could only do this and achieve this and do this. If you could only give God the chance that he's asking for. That is the only if I could, you could do. If you could only give God the chance. Mm -hmm. If you could only submit yourself to God. And come under subjection of the Holy Spirit. Right. 
only then you'll be able to move up in life didn't the bible clearly written that promotion comes from god elevation comes from god achievement comes from god the world will promote god the world do all it could to make sure that god doesn't make it out there to reach you as a people I need to understand that the world belongs to the devil. When I say the world, I don't mean the, 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 the entire planet and the earth and the solar system. Eh? I mean the carnal part of life belongs to the devil. The carnal part of life. If you don't know what it means, the world. Because I know some of the times you will hear preachers and people talking about the world and God. and The world is the carnal part of the sinful nature. The sinful aspect, the carnal part of life. There is a carnal part which is the fleshly part of life, and there is a spiritual part. And the spiritual part is where God deals, where God dwells, where the knowledge of God sits, where the love of God flows, where the peace of God comes from. So you say, because, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subjected to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. If you are carnal minded. Then therefore you will not be able to take in. You will not be able to accept the word of God. Right. It would not sit right with you. Right. It would not sit right with you. That is how you know when you're feeding the flesh a little too much. You see, when, you, when you're flipping through the channels or you're going through YouTube and you see people like me and other people preaching and you can't stand it, that is when you know. That is exactly when you know you're feeding the flesh too much. You're feeding the flesh a little too much. So the canal part of life is a fleshly part of life and that part of life which is the sinful part of life belongs to the devil you see everything that is sin and evil is the devil's own and jesus said give to caesar which is caesar's and give to god which is god and verse 8 says so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're living in the flesh, you cannot please God. Hear me tonight. You cannot please God living in the flesh. You cannot please God living in the flesh. And I said that a little while ago. You cannot please God living in the flesh. Excuse us a second Instagram timeout. I don't know why these things is like that. But like I say, if you don't know, allow me to educate you. Technology and everything that surrounds technology belongs to the devil. If you don't know, allow me to educate you. Technology and everything that belongs to technology, whether it be movies, video, internet, mm. anything that belongs under the title technology belongs to the devil. So as a child of God, whensoever you gain problems with technology, the devil always against you. The devil always against you. So as, as I was saying, Romans 8 verse 8. So then, they that are in the flesh 
cannot please God. I was telling all that. I just explained to you all before Instagram time now. The carnal part of life is the fleshly part of life, which is a sinful nature. Yeah. God cannot be glorified in sin. Be very careful of these preachers who just tell you things like, you fall short, just continue to go. You need to repent. God saw that. You sin and you fall short, God saw that. There is nothing that could catch God by surprise. There is nothing that could catch God by surprise. If you go, if you skip a few verses, now you don't skip a few verses yet, right? We are reading verse 8. eight. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that, him, here the scripture says, yeah? if you tell yourself that you're in the spirit, if you tell yourself you're in Christ, if you tell yourself you're in God, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of yes. his. If you do not have the spirit of God, then you stop calling yourself a child of God. If you do not come under subjection to the Holy Spirit, if you do not submit your life to God and be submissive to the Holy Spirit, therefore you cannot call yourself a child of God. Mm -hmm. That requirement is that I told you. Therefore you cannot tell yourself as a child of God or beat your chest and say that. Right. Because I'll tell you something and it is written in the Bible also. There's a lot of people that confess with their mouth but their hearts actually Far from God. Right. There are no scriptures upon scriptures. But how often God does get glory from them? Right. How often God does receive praise from them and adoration from them? How often they'll spend time in God's presence? How often they'll communicate and, and have intimacy with God? How often? Once every week if they go to church. And verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Mm. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. righteousness. Amen. Amen. When Christ is in you, everything that surrounds the physical aspect of life and the carnal-minded aspect of life, the fleshly sin desire, will become dead to you. You will have no desire to want a party and zest and all these things here tonight. People telling you, because they themselves are being fooled and manipulated by the devil, that God gave you a choice and you could do whatever you want. Hello, somebody. If you could do whatever you want and God give you a choice, why is there people in hell right now? Then hell supposed to be a place empty. If you could do whatever you want because God gave you free choice free and free will, God gave you free will, but people say God gave you free choice to do whatever you want. Right? If it is you have free will and free choice to do whatever you want, why is there people going to hell? Why is it that people who do whatever they want with the choice that they want to choose does end up in hell? You are being deceived by the devil when you hear people tell you that. God didn't give you a free choice to do whatever you want. He give you a free choice. And the free choice he give you is life on it. He didn't give you free choices mm. and free ways. Mm. He give you a uno, one. He give you a free choice and a free will. And therefore you must choose now, as the Bible says, either you're going to live or you're going to die. You must choose. Because if you don't choose, it won't choose for you. 
And 99% of the time, it is always Tuesday. Because the devil is so smart on persuading people and getting them and manipulating them and getting them to do whatever he wants them to do. If you do not have the eyes of discernment and don't have this, the submissive part of your life to the Holy Spirit, which is to lead you into all truth and righteousness, then you'll find yourself going in circles. One minute I live in good, I peace in God, and I fall back in sin. And catching you, you're catching yourself, catching your grandpa to get back out of it. And we'll skip two verses and go to 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify in deeds of the body, ye shall live. If you go to Revelation 13, I believe. But it is in the book of Revelation. It says that, Behold, I come quickly. And your reward is with me. This is Jesus speaking. This is God speaking. Your reward is with me to give every man according to his works, according to his deeds. So it's based upon your works for God. It's not only about, all right, I will help this person, I will help that person. When the Bible talk about, you come to get a reward according to your works, it means what you did for Christ. How much soul you tried to save. How much people you tell about me? How many people you introduce to me or introduce me to? How much people you leave the option to choose Christ? That is the work he's talking about. Not just seeing people in help and trying to help them. Not to help you get to heaven. You can't bribe your way to heaven. Listen to what I say. It is in the scriptures. There is only one way to heaven and the door is Jesus. Any man try to enter it in any other way, enter it as a thief. So you can't bribe your way to heaven. You can't try to talk your way into heaven. You must put in the work. You have to put in the work. So doing all the good that you tell yourself you're doing, and God put you in a first class seat in heaven. You will find yourself in hell still. You must go through that door called Jesus. You have to come to Jesus. No man come to the Father. Where is the Father in heaven? No man come to heaven unless they come to me. Even Christ himself said that. He said, no man come to the Father except through me. Where is the Father? Let me don't take too much biblical. Let me just use common sense. If the Father in heaven, therefore he mean you can't go to heaven unless you go through him. He through is the, the door. Mm. You must go through the Son to get to the Father. And the boat in heaven. And right now the boat are in heaven. Right. The Son is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, <laughs> you gotta understand that the Bible tells you in Scripture that God will take the foolish things of the world and confront the wise. When the Bible talks about the foolish things of the world, he's talking about people who don't mind looking foolish for Jesus. He didn't mean he can take a stupid old dustbin and, and make that shame somebody. It does happen like that also, but come on. It's not that he was talking about. He's talking about the people who don't mind looking stupid for me. You see the ones who, who the world counted out as nothing? You see the ones who, who the world counted as a fool? Because I'll tell you something. Me trying to preach grace, me trying to preach salvation, the word of God to some people, I would look like a total fool. But that is okay. That is okay. You need to understand that the world we are talking and God we are talking is not the same. Exactly. exactly. Because see, you and I, we both know that if you add one and one and one, if you put one plus one plus one, you'll get three. But when God say the Father plus the Son plus the Holy Spirit is still one, it wouldn't make sense to you. But it is still one. Come on, somebody. You need to come on that subjection. Yeah. You need to submit yourself to God and be submissive to the Holy Spirit. Let you look at our next scripture, 1 Peter 5 5. 1 Peter 5 5.
the people who now tune in. We are talking about the topic submitting your life to the will of God. Submitting to the will of God. And I want to cover this part of the topic today. And the next part of the topic is trusting in God's process even when it don't see plan. Because I'll tell you something. There are very few people who, who ever get to know what the plan of God is like. One of the person could be Enoch. Enoch saw the ending from the beginning. So he have an idea what the plan of God is like. John, Paul to a certain point. First John 5, first Peter 5.5. 5. And this is what the scripture say. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourself unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Amen. Submit yourself one to another. Mm. Be subjected one to another. That means you must be so humble mm. that even though I'm smaller than you, you're supposed to still be able to listen to me. Oh, I'm bigger than you. Mm. 